Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Before we get into the actual episode, I want to do a little bio on uh, Matt Marinchik, uh, who's going to be our guest on today's episode and also on Uh, Wednesday's episode. Uh, Like many country music singer-songwriters, Matt Marinchik's journey started with the guitar. He says, my dad was about to get rid of his old guitars and asked him not to. I wanted to try my hand at playing, he says. And uh, fast forward 17 years, and here he is in Nashville signing a record uh, deal with Century Music Group. And then Marinchik uh, learned early on that hard work and dedication paved the road to success in life. At six foot ten, he earned a four-year full basketball scholarship to Ohio State University, and then moved on to play six successful seasons uh, professionally in Europe, including time in—I'm going to butcher this word—but in Sliga, uh, the highest-level league of professional club basketball in Germany. Uh, feeling the desire to keep following his dreams, Marinchek moved to Nashville in the summer of 2011 to pursue a country music career. And the experience and practice of regularly performing on stage began to bring Marinchek high praise and recognition, uh, which eventually grabbed the attention of Century Music Group label founder and music producer Art Ward, who says, Matt is the whole package, a talented singer, a strong songwriter, a skilled musician, an eager, hardworking overachiever, and a real go-getter. You can't go wrong with an artist like that, says Ward. So in 2014, Marinchek began work on his debut album at Century Music Group entitled Big. 2015, he released a limited release, signed and numbered collector's edition EP containing five songs from the big album. Uh, Matt's an energizing performer. He mixes the perfect combination of country music to keep the crowd of all ages entertained, says Jerome Franz, manager of Lucky Stout House in Columbus, Ohio. So, if Merrick Chick's life thus far were put into a song, it would be one of twists and turns, of hard work and determination, and of new beginnings and great things to come. I hope you enjoy the episode with Matt Marinchik, country music singer out of Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Guerra, and today I have Matt Marinchik, who is a country music singer in Nashville. Uh, He came from uh, the Ohio State University, went out to Europe for a little while, and then came back to the States uh, to live his entrepreneurial dream, and I thought we'd talk to him right before we... Uh, descend on Nashville and Mass as the pharmacist nation. So, Matt, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you so much. Good to good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's just start a little bit with your road. Uh, tell me a little bit about Ohio State. You were a basketball player there, and you know you went to Europe, and then how you ended up in Nashville, or how you made that big jump. Well, okay, yeah. So. Um, I guess I, I should say I, I'm six foot ten to begin with. So the basketball thing uh, is a pri- when you're six foot ten. The first thing they make you do is basketball, and then you can do. Then you have the opportunity to do whatever you want after that. Okay. Uh, you know, all my life, um, you know, basketball was a was a priority for a long time. But I, I started playing guitar at a at a young age. Uh, my dad played and um, taught me to play, and um, I would. Well, I guess when I got older, um, I started to play in the off season at, you know, bars and coffee shops and uh, frat houses. And it kind of just grew from there. So then finally, um, after about six seasons, uh, or it was six seasons in Germany, I um, ended up uh, just really loving um, my uh, music side of my life so much that I was like, man, I... I was getting bummed out having to go back home or going back to, to Europe because I wanted to spend so much time playing. So I ended up canceling my contract to go back to uh, Dusseldorf and uh, Germany and uh, moved to uh, moved down to Nashville. I, I, I took some um, uh, I, I started recording an album and uh, got it recorded and then moved down to uh, pursue the next chapter. So that's something that maybe, you know, actors and actresses go to L.A. and then authors go to New York and you go to Nashville. So what was that yeah. like when you got there? It's like, hi, I'm here. You know, yeah. uh, what's that first day like when you really got there and it like, did it hit you? Well, uh, I guess it was kind of strange because I, I, 
I had, um, you know, the first thing is like, okay, you decide to go to Nashville. So then the next thing you have to think about is, okay, where am I going to live? So, um, I had a voice coach, uh, um, who was giving me some vocal lessons and, um, she knew, um, her, she had a student that was down here, um, doing some background vocal stuff for a whole bunch of, uh, singers. And, uh, she told me to get in contact with him. He actually ended up singing background vocals on my first album. And, um, uh, he knew his, he also played, uh, he sang background vocals for Loretta Lynn, who has a guitar player who has a place that he's renting out to somebody and the guy's rent just went up. So I ended up um, calling this guy um, and moving into his basement slash rental home when I first got here. He had it all set up as a separate home and um, I lived there for the first couple of years of my life or in Nashville. So um uh, I, it was cool because I got to learn a lot of, uh, hear him play a lot of, uh, old country songs, which I already liked, but, um, he, and get to go see Loretta Lynn and it was, it was a really cool experience. Okay. So you, you landed, how do you make a living? Uh, that's the second thing. So, you know, oh, you're okay. in LA and, and New York and people are waiting tables or whatever job that, yeah. that allows them to have the flexibility to do their gigs when they come up. But how do you, how do you make a living? Okay, so when I first got to Nashville, all in my mind was just songwriting. Like, that's what I thought was going to be my path. Like, I'm going to start writing songs and, you know, hopefully down the line I'll start bringing in money. But um, fortunately, I had um, a, uh, a basketball career that had left me with some, some money that I could use to kind of segue between the two uh, uh, careers, I guess. So I didn't have to just immediately get into a, a job, which was really good because I got a chance to do a lot of networking. And, and that's really important in this world uh, of, of music is, is connecting with people who also write songs and, and play gigs and stuff like that. And I did that for a while. The first, like, uh, I guess I, three or four months I just spent writing songs and getting to know people and uh, oppor- where opportunities were. Um, and then I just... I just started getting a, uh, a, uh, I started getting these little gigs downtown at some really bad hours of the week. And, uh, just because they were the first ones available and that's kind of how it is. Like they test you out and ask you to play at these, um, uh, t- like Monday afternoon gigs where the, normally there's, there's, there's nobody there. there. Like you, you can yeah, play to so, two or three people. Yeah. And then, and it's slowly, eventually, um, learning more songs, learning how to communicate with the crowd, learning the whole trade of, of performing. Uh, you kind of get better and get better times and get more gigs and people start calling you instead of you having to go reach out. I mean, there were some bars that I had to wait six months to get into and from the first moment contacted and then some were immediate. You know, it's all different. So, And now I've got to a point where Sometimes in the spring, summer, and fall, I'm playing, you know, 30 to 35 gigs uh, a month. So um, it's a big, uh, it's a big change. It's a lot more uh, playing than writing if I had my choice. But at the same time, you know, that's how you got to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. When you when it comes down to writing, um, you know, it's it's such a small chance that your song is going to be picked up then it's a smaller chance that it's going to be picked up by a big time artist. And then it's even smaller chance that that artist is going to put it on their album and it's going to get released. And then it's going to be a, you know, top 40 song and you're going to actually get some revenue from it. So, uh, you know, playing roulette, I guess you could say, it's just a, it's a riskier thing with not as much continual return as, you know, playing a gig, getting paid for it, going home, you know, putting in the bank. So, uh, that was more appealing to me. So, so I, did, you, I started doing that a lot more. Do you get paid for your gigs or do you just make the money from the CDs that you sell or is it a combination or depends? Okay. Uh, downtown you play for tips, uh, on Broadway. That's how people make the money down there. And then the CDs you sell or whatever merchandise you have for me, it's CDs. 
um, out of town is is always better uh, for a musician or, or anything because out of town they pay you a base pay. So you do that, then you make tips, then you sell CDs. So it's uh, the road gigs people really enjoy as as uh, performers and artists and stuff down here. It's usually more uh, lucrative for like a guarantee. Mm-hmm. But, um, but downtown can be just as good, um, you know, because you're playing to a revolving door of, you know, hundreds of people in the hours that you're playing. And um, people pretty much understand that that's the kind of town that this is where people kind of rely on the kindness of strangers to, uh, you know, help support these people that are entertaining everybody every day. So which starts at like 10 a.m. and it goes to about 3 a.m. So there's always... <laughs> <laughs> music playing and everybody's trying to uh you know everybody's down there doing the same thing trying to get their name out or uh entertain people and and make money so they can pay their bills or feed their children or you know get their cats and dogs the cigarettes that they use i don't know what, whatever <laughs> it is, so. that sounds like another song um yeah. <laughs> when, when we when mindy and i met you you said you were trying to learn a song a day my brother-in-law michael peterson he's uh he picked up the guitar probably about six or eight months ago, and he just had a baby, so he plays to her. But he wanted to know how do you learn a song a day? Is or I think is I think that you said something to that effect. Yeah, um, I think that I'm probably not a song a day because I think I know I think I know like 450 songs. So I've been here for six years, so I have not been doing a song a day, um, but. I try to learn songs as much as I can, especially if they're songs that people request. And um, when people request a song uh, enough, and it's a song that I think that would like fit my kind of range or style or whatever, I'll definitely go home and learn it. So um, what I do is um, just go grab one of my guitars and... Um, there's so many different apps and websites that have songs. Um, so I'll hop on there and what I'll actually do is go onto YouTube and pull up the video and listen to it one time. And okay. then, um, I'll pull up the, the chords for it. Next thing. And, uh, I'll just start going through it and, and I'll spend, you know, a few hours getting a, a good, grasp on you know what the song should feel like or there's some i mean i i feel good about how good i can play guitar but i know that i'm nowhere near as good as some of the people that are recording these songs and so there might be a part or two that i kind of uh, have to make my own by like making a part that is able for me to play and sing out and not be too complicated that i'm going to be messing it up so um you know, I might have to leave out some of the guitar solos and stuff, that, but uh, for the most part, I, I do my best to get it to sound like the original. So okay. that's how that works. Okay. Yeah, no, I know. My piano teacher, she's like, why are you playing this version with four sharps? Why don't you just play the regular version with no <laughs> sharps? So it's like, all right, that's fine. You know, kids won't know go. the difference. Kids yeah. won't know the difference. Yeah. Okay. So you, you've made it to Nashville and... So what is your life look like on a day-to-day basis now? You're, you, I think I saw some kind of Facebook post where you were like, you were briefly in the show Nashville. Like when I say briefly, I mean, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, can you tell me a little bit about that and kind of like, did that, how, how did that happen? Okay. So, um, I, uh, you know, sometimes I, I don't really like too many days off. So if there's, uh, too many days off, I get, I start looking for things that um, I can do. And one of them was uh, I got an, um, I'm trying to remember how the first time this came about. I got a, a phone call from a guy that I had met downtown at, well, just south of, or I guess it would be west of downtown at a place called Midtown area, which is the whole bunch of bars that are more for the people that um, live in town and don't go down to the Broadway bars. But there was a place, um, and I ran into a guy. He ran a casting thing for um, uh, a whole bunch of different shows and movies and music videos. He, he did that. So he ended up in uh, seat fillers so uh, for, for award shows. So my first 
actual opportunity with this company was to go to the CMA Awards, which was cool. So I got to go there and sit and fill in a seat, which was pretty awesome. A uh, free chance to go see the CMAs. That's nuts. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it was supposed to be um, where when the stars got up to leave and they needed to still film and wanted to look like it wasn't an empty show, they would we would go run down, sit in the chair, and when they came back, we'd move, and then that was it. So that we were seat fillers. But <laughs> I kind of got lucky because I found a seat that was just empty. Uh-huh. So I got to sit there the whole time. So it was kind of cool, and I was pretty close and got to see it. That was my first opportunity of being at the CMAs, and um, it was uh, it was a cool experience. But anyway, back to the main story. I ended up uh, getting asked to do some scenes for this new show coming out called Nashville, and I um, thought it was cool. So it's a cool experience. I had never done anything like that. Uh, you go to this set and there's a lot of people there cause you're an extra and they, depending on where you are, um, you know, out of location or at the s- studio, um, you end up, uh, doing whatever they tell you to do over and over and over and over again. And, uh, they feed you a meal or two, depending how long you are there and you get to meet a lot of cool people. Most of the people there are, are other, you know, starving artists or whatever you want to say, <laughs> okay. but, but, um, um, yeah, my first scene there, I was a, I was a bouncer um, for about five seconds, um, checking people's IDs at the door um, awesome. of a bar. But then I've done it other times where I'd be at a coffee shop, or I, I think I think if I really look through all the episodes the last few years, I think I'm on, um, you know, twelve or thirteen. Uh, but you would never know it because it's just like a background scene and. You're just kind of just peeking your head. Because I'm so tall, they, they like to use me a lot to set me in somewhere which will block another camera that's in the scene, and they don't have to move it. So you're just standing <laughs> in front of me. So I'm kind of a prop myself. <laughs> so so country music star, camera <laughs> blocker. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's my main thing. I'm going to switch just to that. As, as long as they know your brand. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to we're going to end here for this first part of the episode okay. and then later we're going to come back and we're going to take a walk through Nashville uh in the in the next week. So, Matt, thanks for being on the Pharmacy Leaders podcast. Thank you so much. Support for this episode comes from Good Night Pharmacology. 350 brand and generic name drugs with classifications. A leading resource for students in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. Print, ebook, and audiobook available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag HashPharmacyLeaders 